I'm glad you mentioned uh, Stephanie because Stephanie went on record as saying that Paul was the first writer that she ever had to suspend without pay, and she says it was because Paul was behaving like a child. What's the backstory on all this? What can you tell us about the suspension? <laughs> Well, I don't think he was suspended without pay. Now, she may have said that, but I don't think he was suspended without pay. Okay. Paul had a habit of trying to get young disciples around him. Paul always liked to have a step and fetch it. He liked to have young boys that would do his bidding, go get him his, his laundry and go get him his... Kung Pao chicken, extra pow, easy on the peanuts, make them salted extra chicken, sir. And Paul would uh, just recruit. So anytime that a new writer would come in or a writer's assistant would come in, Paul would take them under his wing. I will show you the way, my good man. And there was one in particular uh, by the name of uh, Dominic that he was a nice young guy, but a little goofy. But Paul had chosen Dominic as his new disciple, and Paul had gotten up and, and, and kind of grandstanded in the writer's room about, this young man is trying hard, and he wants to go out, and he wants to prove himself. So... I would like for everyone to listen to his ideas with a full heart and give him an opportunity to contribute to this team. So whatever Dominic does, I want everyone to give him his attention and, and, and listen. Now, Dominic, you had an idea. Please pitch it to the room. And this was at a time when everybody had kind of started seeing through some of Paul's stuff and, and Paul wasn't the most popular guy in the room. And Dominic made a pitch for a women's match in which the women would be stripped down completely naked in the ring. And everybody's like, okay, Dom, then what? What do you do? Well, uh, no, 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 Dominic, what, what do you do? I mean, they're, they're, they're naked. What? You can't have naked women. No, nah, man, they got nip covers. And when he said nip covers, that just, everybody in the room blew a gasket, especially Brian Gewertz. Well, Heyman took this situation and, of course, blows up, starts cutting a promo on uh, Brian for disrespecting Dominic and disrespecting these young writers who are trying to be a part of this team and trying to pitch ideas, but yet you make fun of them and... Brian fired back on Paul. And when they did, it was kind of like two uh, umpires or, or an umpire and a, and a ball, uh, ball player when they bump chess. And they come across the room at each other and kind of bump chess. And, and I wasn't really paying attention at this point to the argument because it was silly at best. But... When they bumped chess, there was one of the writers in the room, a guy named Pete Doyle, and Pete jumps up, and Pete gets in between them and is holding them back, and like, hey, calm down, calm down. And, it, and it, I thought it was a pinch fight. It looked like two girls in a pinch fight. So they got separated, and, and uh, <coughs> somehow Stephanie found out about it, and they get called into Stephanie's office and reprimanded and the part that and they, they were both suspended okay but the part that pissed me off more than anything was i was supposed to go home that day and i was supposed to go home on like a three o'clock flight and i was told i couldn't go home until stephanie met with the team so i had to catch an earlier i mean a later flight to have stephanie come into the room to tell us that paul and Brian were going to be sent home for three weeks and that we were to have no contact with them. And in the all-time classic Michael Hayes line, to this day, the best, and this is partly where we get the doot, doot, doot from, Michael blurts out, but he didn't do it. 
He did it, pointing at Haman. He started it, Stephanie. Do, do, do. My goodness. And the whole room was like, here, it was like you were in third grade. And he started the fight. So, yeah, they, they got to go home. And still get, they still got paid. I'm sure they still got paid. They got paid and, and got to go home and didn't have to do shit. Is this around the same time that the phone call story happens, the conference call story? The conference call story happened during during the suspension time. And Paul was the phone call story, folks, for those of you who don't know what the hell we're talking about. We would have conference calls over the weekend where you would dial into a number and then you had a code, you dial into the code, and everybody gets on a conference call. So when you get on the call, you had to announce your name. So it would say, Bruce has just joined the conference. Conrad has just joined the conference. Vince has just joined the conference. When you would drop off and you would hang up, it would tell you, Bruce has left the conference. Conrad has left the conference. So we're having a conference call on this Saturday. This is during time that Paul was suspended from the company. And we used the same conference call number because it was only us that had that number. And we're in the middle of a creative meeting, and all of a sudden we hear a burp has left the conference. There was no name. Mm. So then says, roll call. Who's here? Who was that? Who dropped off? Roll call. Everybody, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Everyone was there. But someone had been on and had left the conference. The other thing about those conference calls is when you dial in, it logs your number, where you're calling from. Uh. The call came from a Scarsdale residence that was traced back to um, last name Heyman. <laughs> it was his mom and dad's house. Correct, Amundo. That's amazing. And Paul denied it. Paul Paul denied it for the longest time. And I uh, just told recently that he was like, ah, oh, yeah, I was on. What did that sound like when he was uh, denying it? I was not on the phone, sir. It was not me. But That's Paul, it, it got traced back to your parents' house. It was not me, sir. But, but Paul, I, there, it, it went back to your parents' house. Not it. Well, let's talk about why Paul was removed. Stephanie has said that Paul wasn't effective on the writing team for whatever reason. And, and I find that hard to believe. But Paul has said that, you know, he wasn't maybe mature enough to be in that environment at the time. I, I guess, you know, he could be pretty vocal and pretty opinionated and, and had a hard time, I guess the right word is assimilating can you speak to why he, you think he was removed and, and why Stephanie would go so far as to say he wasn't effective? Yeah, because Paul had everybody else doing the work for him. Paul would, like, shoot out ideas and talk about, you know, the big picture and then kind of pawn it off to Dave Lagana or Pants or, or whoever else was working under him at the time and have them come back with a show. And he would push it off so late he didn't meet deadlines he would be late for Vince meetings it was a combination of things that Paul was almost begging to get off of the team and begging to just be a talent and not have to worry about writing the show from week to week because writing the show from week to week also came with heat the boys if they weren't being used they're coming back to you and they're saying hey why aren't you using me why aren't you doing this so he wasn't, you know, he wasn't being heralded as, as the genius and the savior at this time, and it just wasn't working. And the, the rest of the team members were starting to complain, and, and you could see through it. You Stephanie saw through it. You mentioned Lagana and Pants. Have you already talked about Paul's disciples? Yes. Uh, and, and would you list them all, I mean, as being Pants and, and Lagana and Dominic? 
yeah, those are the three main ones that during his tenure that he had that he really tried to bring bring into the Heyman fold. Describe exactly what that means in your opinion. How did he get these guys on board? Was he just super complimentary to them? Is this kind of reliving the old ECW pre-pay-per-view speeches that we fans have heard about? A lot of it like that, yes. But you also have to remember that these guys were coming in as writer's assistants when they first came in. So their job was to do whatever you know the writers needed them to do. So Paul would would bring them in and let's go to Chick Fil A and come with me. I, I will buy you a chicken sandwich. Um, they made them feel a part of it and would ask them, you know, tell me your, uh, give me your idea. That is excellent. I am going to use that. You will get full credit, sir. And he just. He was Paul. So, yeah, a lot of the speeches that you've seen on the different things, Paul could be very persuasive and a very charismatic guy. What would you say was Paul's biggest harm to himself? I mean, did he have one big flaw as the head writer? Was there one single thing, or was it just trying to delegate too much? Not knowing when to, not knowing when to quit, not knowing when to tap out and be able to move on to the next thing. Um, accept a decision and move on. Like it or don't like it, just be able to, to accept it and move on and make it the best you can. If Paul didn't like an idea, he wouldn't, he wouldn't work hard to make it successful. 